We're here with Greg Polinski, Director of Player Personnel for the Brooklyn Nets and one of the organizers of the Nets Combine. Greg, uh, what goes into uh, organizing this Combine? Well, I mean, we did this in conjunction with the Houston Rockets and the uh, LA Clippers. So basically, we all work to develop a pool of players. Bobby Marks, uh, our assistant GM, does a tremendous job leading the way with this. And uh, collectively, we come up with what we thought was a group that on various criteria, not only guys we thought were deserving, but also some players that maybe people haven't seen over the year, like an Angelo Sharpless from an Elizabeth City State, A.J. Matthews from Farmingdale State. So we tried to mix in some variety we thought would be good for the entire league to see some guys, as well as take some players that had maybe not been at the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. Of course, some of those guys blended in as well. What was your goal? What were you guys trying to accomplish here in these two days? Well, I think to see guys in a five-on-five -five venue, because the league is, is you may or may not be aware of, um, allows one five-on-five -five venue, this is it. Uh, obviously, Chicago Pro Draft's different. Minnesota's group workout will be different, and teams' workout. So this gives guys a chance to see some players, general managers, high-up management people, a chance to see guys maybe during the course of the year because they're with their teams a great deal. They couldn't get out to see these guys. Why do you think um, some of the top prospects elect not to participate in, a, in, in this event? How do you get the first round prospects in, in, a, in a setting like this? Well, I think that's always a personal decision and who's ever managing them, the agency, if they feel like uh, this helps them or might diminish where they think they should go in the draft. You know, we always, ourselves, we're always encouraged by the guys that stick their head out there and play but we also realize that each individual has to make their own decision what they think is going to help project them better in the draft. What kind of turnout did you guys get this year from from the league? Well I think we had the entire league and uh, the beauty of it is everybody chips in you know a share of the 30 teams all chip in 130th and so it becomes I think a very cost efficient way to observe a lot of prospects. What happens here off the court? What do you guys get um, besides watching them play five on five? Well, like many teams, as we do, this is an opportunity also to set up interviews, to sit down with them, go through things that how you perceive them, things you have heard, their positives. You learn a great deal about them that all goes into the formula when you're making a final decision. As a talent evaluator, what can you see here that what can, in addition to what you already know from the college season? I think I like to look at guys that they've had a little break from the year. So did they stay in shape? Have they worked on their bodies? Um, have they been committed in the gym to improvement? As well as every team has a different style of play. So let's say, for instance, you're watching a team that played a great deal or a player that played somewhere where they played a great deal of full court man to man. Now you get to see them maybe in the half court where there wasn't a lot of trapping and so forth or a player that was in a at a school where they um, their main emphasis is on zone defense. So you get to see a guy maybe guard the basketball, play pick and roll more for teams that maybe run straight motion. So I think there's you're looking for little slices of how you still are trying to interpret a guy versus maybe the entire picture. What's the next step for you here in the draft process uh, leading up to, uh, to draft day? Well, just to continue to do our homework. You know, um, uh, you know, I work for a very creative general manager in Billy King, and maybe there's some deals on the table, uh, not just where we're picking at 22, but to make sure that we know the draft from top to bottom uh, through our video study, through our background checks, through our analysis. I think it's similar to probably what a lot of other teams do. You're always looking for some kind of edge to get you in a better position. How do you like this draft? How do you think it stacks up to previous ones that you've evaluated in your career? It may be not quite as top heavy as some, but you know, the thing I've learned about the drafts as you get closer, I think you always like it a little bit more if that small group of guys that you like is still on the board. So I think it's going to be fine. We think we're going to get a player that can help our basketball team, and I think that would probably be the same perspective that most teams hold that are here. Greg, I'll let you get back to work. Thank you so much for your time and best of luck. My pleasure. Thank you.